Now, without further ado, it is my pleasure to share the origins and background of our featured guest. On December 15, 1935, John Taylor Gatto was born in western Pennsylvania in the coal mining and steel milling town of Monongahela, about 35 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. During his early school years, he spent a year at an elite Jesuit boarding school near Latrobe, Pennsylvania, where he learned to think dialectically and was subsequently beaten by the nuns sufficiently to create his outspoken temperament, which has endured lifelong. John did undergraduate work at Cornell, the University of Pittsburgh, and Columbia University, and then he served in the U.S. Army Medical Corps at Fort Knox, Kentucky, and Fort Sam Houston, Texas. Following his Army service, John did graduate work at the City University of New York, Hunter College, Yeshiva University, and the University of California, Cornell, and Reed College, which is a private independent liberal arts college located in southeast Portland, Oregon. Like many famous American iconoclasts, John honed his skills in a variety of professions before finding his talent and passion for teaching, which proves to be his real gift to this world. After almost 30 years of teaching in New York City's inner city schools, he was named New York City Teacher of the Year in 1989, 1990, and 1991, and that same year was also the New York State Teacher of the Year. Later in 1991, he wrote a letter announcing his retirement from teaching titled, I Quit, I Think, to the op-ed pages of the Wall Street Journal stating that he no longer wished to hurt kids in order to make a living. Soon thereafter, he was the subject of a show at Carnegie Hall titled, An Evening with John Taylor Gatto, which subsequently launched a career of public speaking in the area of public school reform. He then began a worldwide public speaking and writing career and has received several awards from libertarian organizations, including the Alexis de Tocqueville Award for Excellence in Advancement of Educational Freedom in 1997. John has been invited all over the world to share his research and has spoken to audiences in Australia, Spain, France, England, Mexico, China, and Canada, as well as every one of the 50 American states. Since his public resignation in 1991, he has traveled over 3 million air miles. He's spoken at Harvard, NASA Space Center, the White House, Smith College, and the Cato Institute, among many other places. John has also keynoted over 30 state homeschool conventions and supports unschooling and open source education for personal learning. In his book, Weapons of Mass Instruction, here's how John defines open source education. Open source learning accepts that everything under the sun might be a possible starting point on the road to self-mastery and a good life. In open source, learning sequences are personally designed or personally signed off on, and everyone you encounter is a potential teacher. In open source, teaching is a function not a profession. Everyone learns and everyone can learn to teach themselves as well as others. In open source, students are the active initiators. You learn that you either write your own script or by default, without your input, you become an unwitting actor in someone else's script. The main thesis of John's body of work can best be illustrated, in my opinion, by asking the question, what do public schools actually teach children? and answering it with the main themes contained in John's first book, Dumbing Us Down, wherein after decades of experience teaching in public schools, he draws the following observations about how these schools are designed in form and function. He relates that public schooling teaches confusion by breaking coherence. It presents an ensemble of information that the child needs to memorize in order to stay in school. Public schooling teaches them to accept their class affiliation. Public schooling makes them indifferent and suppresses natural curiosity. Public schooling makes them emotionally dependent on approval from authority. 
Public schooling makes them intellectually dependent on experts and authorities to think on their behalf. That seems to be the opposite of education. Public schooling teaches them a kind of self-confidence that requires constant confirmation by experts and authorities. This is also known as provisional self-esteem. Public schooling makes it clear to them that they are always supervised, under surveillance, and cannot hide, especially in today's society where everything online is tracked and private information is sold in a variety of ways to a variety of predators. And here's the bibliography. John's poetic prose and diligent documentation can be studied in his prodigious preponderance of publications, including Dumbing Us Down, The Hidden Curriculum of Compulsory Schooling, 1992, The Exhausted School, 1993, A Different Kind of Teacher, Solving the Crisis of American Schooling, 2000, The Underground History of American Education, 2001, and in my opinion, this is an essential book to read as it stimulates your internal dialogue, which draws questions as to why are children being methodically undermined and provides the answers with comprehensive references. In 2003, Harper's Magazine published John's article Against School. And last but not least, Weapons of Mass Instruction, A School Teacher's Journey Through the Dark World of Compulsory Schooling, 2008. John's website is johntaylorgatto.com.